Hey guys, so we have a new moon in Scorpio partial solar eclipse to talk about today. Of course, this is happening with the south node of the moon. So this actually is marking a new cycle where we will be releasing ourselves and letting go, detaching from, walking away from sort of maybe some things from the past that have been keeping us back, stealing our power and keeping us from seeing the truth of our self-worth. This cycle is a lot about cutting ourselves free from that which is overcomplicated, that which is superficial, refining things down to their purest and most condensed truth, and then rebuilding in alignment with that. There are likely to be some illusions that are really being shattered over the course of this cycle and replaced with some really deep truths that we are gaining a much greater understanding of, specifically regarding the truth of ourselves, our heart, and what we really desire. Now, the consequence of this may really be some upheavals going on in terms of our status quo or our comfort zone. Things almost shocking us back to reality or waking us up through a splash of cold water on our face or something like that. And also this could really cause some turbulence or some upheaval or some disruptions going on in our relationship dynamics and in our financial dynamics as well. However, we also have some very inspired and very positive motivations motivated, invigorating mental energy that is coming through that should really help us to actually recreate, rebuild, rework, rebalance whatever we find ourselves having to detach from at this point in time in order to create, recreate these things in a way that are in a much deeper and more authentic alignment with these personal truths that we are coming to realize we can no longer walk away from, run away from, hide from at this point in time. So we've got a very illuminating new moon solar eclipse that's coming up guys let's get into this chart let's look at how all this is playing out and what we may be able to anticipate and expect as this new moon and scorpio cycle unfolds welcome back to my channel you guys my name is aubrey and this is my report for our new moon and scorpio partial solar eclipse that is happening at exactly 6 49 a.m Eastern time, time adjusted for wherever you are in the world, October 25th, 2022. It's a Tuesday and it is happening at exactly two degrees on the dot of the sign of Scorpio. I find it very interesting. I want to start this report by talking about the numerology for a minute. If you guys, we are in this 222 year, right? We have a series of twos, a sequence of twos playing out. We are in the year 2022. This whole year is really about helping us to recalibrate the frequency of our heart essentially in order so that we can help attract and magnetize into our lives that which is a true reflection of what will ultimately bring us a sense of like real heart and soul fulfillment a lot of the themes of the purpose of some of the major transitions changes shifts that are happening this year are really to help us come back to a place where we are more aligned with our own personal truth our own personal heart-based frequency so that we can then attract that have that mirrored back to us in our experience so that we can experience much more fulfilling levels of relationships connections um interactions just our relationship dynamics generally can evolve Evolve in terms of the amount of fulfillment that they are bringing us in our lives. That is a major theme that this 222 year, this 2022 year, which is a rare numerological year, is trying to bring to us. And I'm bringing this up in the context of the energy today and for this new moon eclipse that we have going on because there are a sequence of twos, a series of twos that are just front and center in the chart itself. I'm actually going to try to put a little picture of the chart in this video right over here so that you guys can see it for yourself. But it instantly when I pulled up this chart, I was like, wow, okay, so this chart to me is indicating a pretty critical and fundamental period of time that we are entering in right now in that process of recalibrating our heart frequency. And it's very, according to these 222 themes that are coming through with us being in this 222 year, and it's very interesting because we are in the Scorpio new moon, and the Scorpio new moon is in nearly an exact, exact conjunction with which planet? Venus, right? Ruling our heart, ruling our desires in the sign of Scorpio, our deepest passions and our deepest desires. And remember, 
this is a south node eclipse. We are in the sign. This is our new moon cycle that is happening in the sign that is currently hosting the south node, which is what we are detaching from, which is what we are moving away from so that we can go on a new trajectory of growth Taurus, the oppositional sign where the north node is in alignment with cultivating our, our worth and our value essentially and really learning how to make that bloom in this physical reality. But all that being said, just to bring it back to these twos, you know, if you guys have been following my channel for any period of time, I've been sort of pointing out that when there, you know, seem to be more significant numerological emphasis going on on any given day with these series sequences of twos this year, it also has a tendency of being a pretty important chart in this process of this recalibration of the heart energy. So yet again today, you guys, we literally have, if you look at the chart, we have sun, Venus, moon, all at two degrees. It literally is two, two, two. And then right under that, we also have Mercury at 22 degrees of Libra. So we've just got twos, like I said, face value, just right there staring at us, telling us this year or this month right here, this cycle is significant in what this whole year is trying to do for us on like a frequency energy based level, especially in the context of our heart, which now bridges us into you guys talking about the chart itself and the fact that, like I said, the main feature of this chart is that we do have this eclipse happening in an exact alignment with Venus, okay? And Venus is being eclipsed in the process of this new moon cycle, which is telling us a lot. And also the sign that it's happening in as well, Scorpio. And also you guys, going back to that two degree mark, that two degrees where this is happening, sun and the moon aligning at exactly two degrees. Now you guys know if you've been following my work, you know, if you've been on this channel for any period of time, we also analyze the Sabian symbols alongside of the chart and the aspects as they're playing out and the Sabian symbols. These are a group of symbols. There's one for each and every one of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. And every time there is a planet at a specific degree at a point making an aspect, you know, we can look at the Sabian symbol, read the symbol, and it just gives us a symbol, an extra symbolic layer of meaning that can be applied sort of as an overlay in the context of whatever aspect is playing out. So I really value and appreciate the Sabian symbols. But when we're reading Sabian symbols, as you guys know, we always round up a degree because we look at the wave of energy that is pulling in. However, since the new moon itself is happening at just straight up two degrees, not even two degrees in one minute, we are not going to be rounding up to read this degree placement. We are going to be reading the degree placement of straight up two degrees because it's a very clear, very strong two degrees. We have not yet gone to the next minute in time where the next phase of energy is coming in. And that Sabian symbol, two degrees of Scorpio, where this new moon is happening, a broken bottle and spilled perfume. And I just want you guys to think about that for a minute, that, you know, that that symbolism, that imagery, sort of the feeling that that kind of invokes and then sort of apply it to the context of what may be unfolding over the course of this month, because with this new moon that is also an eclipse happening in the sign of Scorpio in the conjunction to Venus, I do feel like this is sort of things spilling out and the breakdown of anything that we've been holding inside of us that has been of a more like superficial nature or that has been used to create some type of appearance or some type of image or some type of facade or for some type of status or some type of like comfort or beauty or something. There's a need to simplify in this energy. There is definite indications of things sort of spilling out, seeping out, and us gaining a greater awareness of things and simultaneously a need to, like I said, simplify or to strip away all that is sort of built on any type of superficial foundation. A south node solar eclipse. The south node, this is the past, this is karma. And in the sign of Scorpio, this is our karmic attachments to that which is stealing our power out of any like 
false understanding of lack of value or lack of worth within us. This is where we surrender our power to gain some type of external validation, love, money, security out of a fear or um, a lack of understanding of the value and the resources we hold within us and ability to really do this on our own. This is where we sacrifice an ability to be sort of... Um, filling our own cup in various ways because we feel like we can't do that and therefore we are willing to sacrifice various aspects of ourselves in order to receive that which we feel that we can't give to ourselves, which gets us in these very toxic and codependent uh, types of connections which take us out of our truth and take us out of our power. And that is what is being really rectified right now as we are in this year and a half period, this 18 month period with the nodes transiting the North Node Taurus, the South Node Scorpio. This is a karmic detox where we are given the opportunity to cut ties with anything that has been keeping us from seeing the truth of our worth, the truth of our value, the truth of our power. And not only that, having an ability to tap those resources, to cultivate them, to grow something that demonstrates that internal value externally in our lives. So ultimately, this year and a half period is trying to do that for us, to wake us up to the latent value, worth, gifts, ability, talent, resources within us, and to help us detach ourselves from anything that has been stifling our ability to develop, cultivate those, and come into a sense of self-empowerment as a result of realizing what we're truly capable of giving ourselves. With this particular new moon happening, the sign of Scorpio, okay, this is about going deep. This is about the core of things, the root of things. It's ruled by Mars and Pluto. It's about power and it's about passion. And with Venus, it's about the root of our passions and the root of our desires, what our heart truly, truly seeks for and yearns for on the deepest levels. And then we're talking about Venus being eclipsed. This is to me a cycle where the surface level of things, anything frivolous, any surface level appearances, any superficialities that have been masking the deeper truths of things for the purpose of appeasing any type of situation or avoiding any type of conflict or difficulty are likely being removed. I feel like over this period of time, wherever we have been denying a deeper aspect of our heart or our feelings for the purpose of keeping things stable or maintaining peace in one way or another, I feel like that image or that facade or that, like I said, like surface level or superficial appearance is going to be removed in one way or another. I feel like this cycle is going to be forcing us to define our true values and priorities. A need to simplify, to minimize, and to get rid of that which is not truly, truly valuable to us or providing value to us at this period of time. With Venus, Venus, you know, this is love, beauty, like peace, balance, kindness, uh, social relations, relations to others, but it can also be very surface level and there can be a definite element of superficiality that it goes along with some of the, um, some of the Venus octaves. Now, the other side of that, this Venus and Scorpio energy, and not only do we have Venus and Scorpio, but Venus is also combust the sun and being eclipsed. Like this is taking away all of that surface level stuff. Like this is leaving us from a heart space with nothing but the truth, no matter how ugly Venus eclipsed that might be or how painful that might be or what we are realizing we need to walk away from in order to restore the truth of our heart in one way or another. These are the type of things that we are likely to be confronting within ourselves and just generally, especially within relationship dynamics moving forward because we are really seeking the truth of the value and we are simplifying things. We are, you know, cutting off the excess. Anything that's like frivolous or overcomplicated is just not what this vibe is supporting or causing us to want to like cultivate and move towards. You know what I mean? We are letting go and we are detaching from what is no longer worth it to us. This is coming through and hitting us like a lightning bolt, you guys, and illuminating to us that which has been hidden in the darkness, that which dwells in the deepest recesses of 
of our heart and our psyche. This is what is likely to be coming to the forefront over this new moon in Scorpio period. And we have the Earth in polar opposition, of course, to the position of the Sun and the Moon and Venus at two degrees of Taurus. That Sabian symbol is an electrical storm illuminates the heavens and the forest. So some type and also you guys i will say that it's very interesting that this is the position of the earth opposite our new moon in scorpio for this specific eclipse because the next eclipse that we are moving to november 8th which honestly that's the big one that one is going to be in a square to uranus like that is the very very big eclipse i feel like whatever we are being shown in this energy is really going to undergo perhaps some radical changes once we get um, to our full moon that is coming up, that's also going to be a total lunar eclipse, blood moon, very, very big that we are moving to. But I feel like the position of the earth today is kind of like giving us a little bit of foresight about what is going to be striking with our full moon eclipse as well, because this is talking about the electrical storm illuminates the heavens and the forest. We're talking about electrical storm. We're talking about a pending eclipse full moon in Taurus and Scorpio that is going to be in a conjunction. That's what it is. It's not a square. It's a conjunction to Uranus. So whatever is being amplified or electrified or whatever we're sort of being shocked back into understanding or seeing or what's being illuminated to us or what we're being suddenly awakened to now is probably going to be directly related to some type of big dynamic changes that are coming with in the next two weeks with the uh, full moon eclipse that's coming as well but illuminating you know <laughs> the heavens and the earth, okay? Like we're seeing as above, so below. We are really gaining a very profound... It's Things are just being exposed to us, you guys. And that is going to be making an impact on our status quo, okay? As we go through the cycle, we're really in it. Like this is, this is it. Like this, of this year, this is the big, big energy that we have like this is very significant this eclipse period that we are in right now and we're going to see it we're probably going to see it on the world stage as well um the sun plus the moon plus venus in the sign of scorpio a new cycle focused on the deepest desires of our heart in alignment with our soul and our spirit the sun and the moon right the sun the moon venus our unconscious our conscious and our heart this is a and in the sign of scorpio from the deepest places this is also like really a cycle about reprogramming our subconscious subconscious mind, our unconscious mind, to, as a reflection of or as an embodiment of these truths of the heart that are surfacing from the depths right now as well, illumining and awakening our core values and desires over the course of this cycle. And then our life is going to need to be radically rearranged in order to mirror and reflect that back to us. And with the South Node, the South Node is about this release through releasing that which has been stealing our power through distorting our sense of self-worth, keeping us bound to these superficial and these false states and appearances that can no longer carry forward as we are going through this transition of ages, you guys, as we're going through this process of self-actualization and really being called to activate our destiny and rise into our higher selves. We can't do that if we are living a life that was built on a false foundation of these like superficial appearances and ideas based on an image that we were trying to maintain or attain or a status or this or that. Like we are getting back to the basics. We are getting back to the truth of who we are, what we're good at, what we're passionate about and what is truly meaningful to us. And we are really detaching ourselves and moving away from a lot of the more materialistic culture, society based status symbols, status goals, like all of that type of stuff is losing the value, the prominence, the priority that it may have had throughout the entire course of our life at this point in time. And we are zeroing back in on what it is that makes us feel purpose and what makes us feel good about ourselves and what really like nourishes and feeds our soul. That is what this energy is trying to do for us and trying to move us towards. Transformations going on within our heart space, you guys, that could cause endings and turbulence 
in business, romantic and social relationships for the reasons that I just stated. And this could represent also with Venus being eclipsed by the sun and combust right now an element of financial loss or a transformation of our status in terms of our material comforts or the financial aspects and areas of our life. But this is again, probably based on these changes of heart that we are having personally and what it is that we are really valuing at this point in time and what it is that we are desiring to put our time into, put our energy into, to connect to, to relate with, to create also. This very, very, very powerfully creative energy we have with Venus, Sun, Moon in the sign of Scorpio, the early degrees of Scorpio for this new moon as well. I do think, as I was saying, that this could be a period of some pretty intense or some pretty like serious conflict or tension that goes on as well. And again, this is because Venus, peace, balance, harmony is being eclipsed over the course of this period of time and is also down in the underworld right now. And not only that, we are in the Scorpio cycle, you guys, which is ruled by what? Which is ruled by Mars and which is ruled by Pluto. And Mars is in sort of a precarious placement right now about to station to go retrograde in the sign of Gemini. Major issues, major problems with news, media, social media, information, education, communications, generally also like all the platforms and stuff, also gossip and slander, false narratives, propaganda, like this type of stuff is and has been very prominent in the field. However, now that we are taking Venus out of things, I feel like like this is likely to ramp up significantly. Like if we were going to see some real like war or civil war or like serious conflict or fighting breakout between oppositional forces, like in a really tangible way at this period of time, like on whatever scale, this is the time that it's probably more likely to happen. Although, you know, with Mars and Gemini, this is still a lot of talk. This is a lot of hot air. This is a lot of like threats and aggression, not necessarily translating into actually things happening on the ground. How However, we are in Taurus and Scorpio. Taurus is an earth sign. This, like I said, this eclipse that we are moving into where Uranus is going to be conjunct, uh, the eclipse that is coming up in two weeks with our full moon. This may be when we really start to see these type of things happening more so on the ground. But the real reason, you know, that I feel like this is because, like I said, this pacifying force, this Venus energy that has been so strong, so strong throughout the course of our Libra cycle and doing so much to sort of keep the boat stable, like keep the boat from rocking to the point of falling over over this past couple months, despite what's been sort of brewing and bubbling under the surface of things. This is like being removed with this. It's being eclipsed, right? While simultaneously, this in this is happening in the sign of Scorpio ruled by Mars and simultaneously Mars going retrograde in the sign of Gemini is being like um, accentuated by the placement of this happening in Scorpio season and also Venus being removed from the picture and also Saturn has just stationed direct as well. So, you know, power, control, authority, recklessness, bad decisions, impulsive, disoriented words and actions on one hand could very much be coming through. There could just generally be some real unleashed insanity that is very much interwoven into whatever is playing out, whatever is coming through and what we're interacting with in our experiences over this course of time. But on the other side of that, Mars is also making a very positive aspect to the planet Mercury and Mars is in Mercury's sign right now, the sign of Gemini. And Mars is in a quite close trine to Mercury right now in the sign of Libra about solutions, about rebalancing, about reconciliation, about justice and balance restored. So on one hand, this is really the time where we are more likely to see some real fights and conflicts playing out and going on and things maybe just getting real heated on the ground to one extent because this pacifying force has been removed and the energy is really exacerbating uh, what's going on with Mars already in sort of a conflicting position 
retrograde in the sign of Gemini and also in the square to Neptune, but with Mars also forming this trine aspect to Mercury ruling his current position in the sign of Libra, this is the free flow of ideas and very facilitated, energized mental energy for solving problems specifically from the past with Mars retrograde and good ideas to help us fix things or to redo or to rework or to rebuild something somehow. This could also have us reconsidering what we want to do and the choices that we want to make right now as well. We're talking about Mars retrograde. It's interesting, you guys, because with Saturn going direct and now Mars going retrograde, this is like us coming to a place where we have sort of restructured the inner framework of our own personal reality in such a way where we are ready to start rebuilding, readjusting, redoing, reworking the things that we have put our energy into building in the past that we are realizing are no longer an authentic reflection of who we wish to become and to grow into to and to like form our lives to represent at this point in time now so very interesting this is we're heading for a period this mars retrograde energy is going to be best used to rework to redo to make adjustments and revisions to what we've built what we've put our energy into what we've been passionate about what we've created in the past figuring out and with the trine to mercury figuring out how to do it better essentially and with saturn direct how to do it in a way that can really carry us forward into the future in a much more like long lasting, efficient, successful, rewarding, um, enduring type of way. So we are really, you know, over this period of time, over this winter heading into the string, we're going to into the spring, we're actually going to be really making a lot of tangible revisions to the various things that we put our energy into our activities, what we do, what we built, what our life looks like generally as a reflection of, you know, the Saturn direct, what we've discovered, we need our life to actually look like tangibly to like make us feel like we are in having like integrity with ourselves and like being in alignment with our truth and stuff like that. And also this period of time, what we are discovering is really truly in the nature of our heart. And you know, this isn't just hitting us out of nowhere. This has been the process throughout September, throughout our Virgo cycle, throughout our Libra cycle too, universe has trying to like slowly show us what is truly important to us, what we really value. And we've been going through a pretty significant process of really redefining a lot of our preferences and rediscovering what we value and rediscovering what we want. It's like now we've come to the point in time where we've like hit a wall and it's like we know now, we know our truth, we're seeing our truth and we can no longer continue putting our energy into or building or going in directions or accepting things or situations or relationships that are uh, in alignment with those more superficial things or that are overcomplicating things in a way that is detaching us in any way from this truth that we are being forced essentially into an alignment with now. The cycle may have us realizing vanity or desire for wealth or money or resources or beauty or luxury or status or even love in some type of a way have overcomplicated our lives in unhealthy or toxic ways or attached us to situations or relationships that don't match the truth of our heart and we just can't take it anymore. We just can't like we're just it's just we've come to a point where we like can't stand for it in one way or another this energy just cannot do the surface level anymore and that just may be something that we're feeling like things that worked for us in the past we may just be like you know what I can't do it anymore. I got to go in a different direction. I got to do something different. This energy is interfering with things that come to us, you guys, through any type of superficial means and that don't promote our own creative process, our own creative potential, our own creative uh, development. This is sort of like removing the safety net or removing the safety blanket. This is like, um, you know, if, if we've been if we've been given things and we've been accepting things because they give us wealth or they give us status or they give us an image or something like that, but we realize, you know, we're actually not creating anything for ourselves or, you know, we are using our gifts to like, um, 
represent somebody else's image or to represent somebody else's value at the expense of our own. Like this is the type of thing where we are just coming to the end of it and we're like, no more. Like I need to start using my energy to create what is true for me. And I want to like gain the value in my life, the resources, the abundance, the love based off of who I am and what I stand for and what I create and what I do instead of, you know, getting a handout from somebody else for what I'm doing to create or to contribute to their personal purpose or their cause or, you know, be a certain image that like, you know, supports this, that or the other, but maybe necessarily isn't what I really feel like is true to my own heart. That is where we're going with this. Having to dig deep to discover our own resources, value and creative potential. But that's also where the wealth is. That's also where the value is. It's like we're not running from that anymore. And it's almost like we would rather do it on our own in a way that is valuable and meaningful and makes us feel like powerful and in control of our lives as opposed to accept something from others. Again, that causes us to sort of live a life that feels like cheapened in some type of way because we are not tapping into that value and that truth within us. Things falling apart that were built on superficial foundations. I feel like this is going to be a major part of this cycle in this month. Lots of polarization and fighting over lies and deception that come up as a result of what is <laughs> spilling out of this broken bottle, this broken bottle and spilled perfume or what is being illuminated through the electrical storm lighting up the heavens and the earth. Lots of polarization, you guys, Mars and Gemini, and with the Venus energy being removed as well in the sign of Mars, this could definitely be creating a lot of conflicts for us that are sort of being unleashed that may have been being held back uh, throughout the course of this past couple months, needing to tear down, walk away from, recreate what we've built from the past based again on these superficial foundations and feeling Saturn direct as well, feeling a moral obligation, a duty, a responsibility to do the right thing by ourselves, by our heart to make the hard choices, even if they are ugly or even if they are painful. Again, this pacifying force being removed, whereas before we may have sort of gone along with it because we just really didn't want to deal with the uglier consequences, the uglier result or the pain or, you know, the hurt feelings perhaps that may have come through speaking our truth or walking away from a situation or standing in our power with this Venus energy removed. It's like, it's more important to expose what's really in our heart, sun, moon, both luminaries, Venus and Scorpio. It's more important to expose our deep passions even if it's something painful, the sign of Scorpio, because that is ultimately what is releasing us from what has been keeping us in the dark, essentially, in terms of our own value or has been holding us back or has been stealing our power. Like we have got to stand in our truth as this energy is unfolding and I feel like this is just indicating that we are coming to the point in time where we are being able to do that despite the upset to the balance of things or the peace that it might cause Venus being eclipsed However, like I said, you guys, this Mars energy inspired ideas and energized mind, helping us to find solutions and see things in a way that helps to restore the peace and restore the balance on some level. It's like we're having to face these ugly truths. We're having to make these difficult decisions. These uncomfortable things are happening. However, as we're going through this process, we are still being mentally energized or inspired along the lines of what we can do to start rebuilding this Mars retrograde energy based on these truths that are coming to redesign, to recreate these foundations that are the superficial ones that are falling away. How can we do it in a way that can restore a sense of inner peace and inner balance. And it's coming from this mentalized energy, these choices and decisions. Lots and lots of choices and decisions are also likely to be coming to us over the course of this period of time, but we want to be very careful and we don't want to be jumping into things head first. That's another thing that we really want to watch out for over this Scorpio cycle is not making rash, impulsive decisions, choices, or actions. Because with Mars going retrograde, and this is also not the time to be starting new things. This is the time to be going back to what we've already built, created, worked, done, and figuring out how to make it better, more successful, and more in alignment with our passions and our knowledge and what we, you know, are wanting to do, create, communicate, and share essentially with Mars in the sign of Gemini. 
We do not, you guys, want to be jumping headfirst into things that are coming up or Mars and Square to Neptune as well. And we'll be talking about this throughout the course of the cycle. But I did want to say this uh, as well. But this mental motivation to move forward, to move on, to per- to giving us an opportunity to come up with some genuine solutions to help our cause essentially moving forward. This Mars energy is also representing that to us. Now, the position of Venus today, Venus in the exact conjunction by the degree, they're all at two degrees. Like I said, the sun and the moon are exactly two degrees, zero minutes of Scorpio. Venus is at two degrees and 30 something minutes of Scorpio. So for her, I am going to be reading the Sabian symbol of three degrees of Scorpio. And that Sabian symbol, symbol where Venus is today is neighbors help in a house raiding raising party in a small village. So I do think that despite the turbulence that may be going on in relationships and committed partnerships and financial uh, partnerships and just work relationships and all that type of stuff, friendships, social circles, like that type of stuff generally, despite, you know, some of the more disruptive tendencies that this energy could bring along those lines and finances and stuff as well. I do also think with Venus at this degree and the truths that we are aligning with, see, that's the thing, you guys, like, yes, we are getting stripped down to our naked truth. But as a result of that, we are also forming and attracting very strong and solid new relationships that are a reflection of that naked truth that will endure, that will go on, that will be the right person at the right time and exactly, you know, what we needed that are these soul connections that are these, um, like like divine union type energies. We are in this two, two, two year, you guys. How I started this report and talking about the numerology that's coming through, I do think that that people will also be coming together. People will be helping people based on this truth and based on these like um, aligned values that we're discovering and working towards a cause together, rebuilding something together. So many people are going through sort of a more destructive phase right now as the like I've said several times, like the more superficial foundations that things have been built upon are crumbling so that we can rebuild from this place of authentic truth while the people that are coming in now and that are helping in that rebuild process and that we are simultaneously helping, like these are a lot of the reasons, these these connections, these relationships, these unions, these are a lot of the reasons why a lot of this stuff had to fall away and they are reinforcing and supporting our ability to realign with the truth of our heart and go through this process of self-actualization where the features, the relationships, the circumstances of our previous experience and world that we have built for ourselves may have been doing just the opposite and prohibiting our ability to align with those deeper truths and go through this process of self-actualization. So we are leaving an environment that has been debilitating to our personal growth for an environment that is supportive and accentuating of our personal growth. However, this transitional process could get messy and it could be very painful and it could be very, very um, uncomfortable and you know, we're, we're having to face a lot of the more darker, ugly truths about our own selves, about the way that we relate with ourselves, about the way we relate with others. This is also about exposing any type of like mind games or psychological domination tactics or control or power, or, you know, distorted, um, just like toxic patterns that we uh, like exhibit or exist within in the realms of relationships like that type of thing cannot go on and we are likely to be seeing the truth about that type of dynamic that may be existing within our own psyche and therefore uh, manifesting itself in our various relationships with others but we also I want to talk briefly the positions the Sabian symbols today of both Mercury and Mars in their trine Mars is at 26 degrees of Gemini where he will be going retrograde winter frost in the woods Mercury is at 23 leaves Libra, Chanticleer's voice heralds the rising sun with exuberant tones. And remember, we have winter frost. We actually have three Sabian symbols talking about the forest that are present for our new moon chart. We've got the earth, an electrical storm illuminates the heavens and the forest. We've got Mars, winter frost in the woods. And we've also got the position of Saturn right now where Saturn is stationing direct or has just stationed direct on the 23rd, a forest fire quenched. To me, the woods symbolically also represent sort of like the darker, more hidden, subconscious, 
like deep recesses of our psyche and our subconscious programming where a lot of our fears of the unknown or of what's happening in the dark or what can't be seen are held. And so with the, uh, the woods and the forest references happening three times as well, I feel like this is also talking about some type of, and we're talking about all of the Scorpio energy as well, something about, you know, what's been held within the deep, within the dark, within like the, the forests or the wood or the recesses of our own subconscious mind, of our own psyche rising to the surface, being electrified, being illuminated, right? The position of the earth by this electrical storm, perhaps some type of storm or some type of significant event or uncomfortable situation that is really illuminating things for us and opening our eyes in maybe a sudden or unexpected way that is actually the position of Saturn, the forest fire quenched, stopping some type of pattern of destruction or self-sabotage that perhaps has been going on and causing us to create or build our lives in a way that is no longer conducive to our growth or success. And then Mars, winter frost in the woods, you know, something being like being iced out and also talking about the winter, like what is going on under the surface, this process, the Scorpio energy, this death rebirth process, this breakdown of the old, this breakdown breakdown of our old subconscious patterns and psychic programming and the fears that we held within these deep recesses of our mind and what that did to really sabotage us being able to functionally execute our consciousness in a way that attracts and creates our desires for us. And just like the healthy relationship dynamics and complexes and like everything that we are actually wanting to experience. I feel like this is sort of talking about maybe that type of thing being brought to the surface, brought to an end, and then what is going to be rebirthed from it in the spring next. And then we have the position of Mercury, Chanticleer's voice heralds the rising sun with exuberant tones. I feel like this is just sort of telling us symbolically that this process of transformation that is taking any like fears or distorted subconscious programming that has been impacting our ability to live life essentially in the way that we consciously want to. I feel like this sort of coming to the end, rising to the surface and ultimately leading to this bright new day that we actually have a lot to be like enthusiastic and excited about moving forward after winter ends. Winter frost in the woods, Chanticleer's voice heralds the rising sun with enthusiastic tones. And it's funny because Mars is stationing at this degree about winter frost in the woods and Mars also we're going to be dealing with this Mars retrograde energy and this Mars and Gemini energy through next spring so this really is going to be sort of you know a winter of this Mars retrograde that we are dealing with but by the time we get to next spring you guys and the frost thaws and Chanticleer's voice is heralding the uh, approach of the spring I think that things are going to be looking radically different for us than they are now and I actually think that we do have a lot to look forward to despite how dark things may appear as we are navigating this next couple of weeks okay in summary, you know, illusions being shattered, okay, exposing a deep personal truth that is likely to come up for us that is also likely to upset our comfort zone or our status quo or our material world, relationship world in one way or another, almost though shocking us back to life in some way, resulting in some type of a release from something that is either overcomplicating our lives or built or based in some type of superficial dynamic of stuff that we really just like cannot relate to anymore. As a result, this could bring some major turbulence or upheaval that is going on in relationship dynamics and financial dynamics. However, we are being gifted with this Mars trine energy as well that is helping us and actually mentally inspiring us to have ideas and to be like sort of motivated to recreate what it is that we value either materially or in relationships and what we need to do to restabilize our lives as a reflection of these much more deep and authentic truths and like versions of ourselves that we are growing into and wishing to embody at this point in time now. So that's really what I feel like is sort of happening and playing out as we are going through this new moon cycle. And like I said, this is only the first half of this energy. This is actually, you know, this is the new moon and this is what we have going on for the new moon. So this is what is the 
overall purpose of this entire next four weeks as this energy unfolds. However, we're going to be getting a, you know, we've got a big full moon that is going to be marking the uh, midpoint, that is going to be marking the culmination point of this energy, and that is really going to be probably causing some pretty serious sh uh, shifts, changes, and just like unexpected things to be going on as well. But Overall, you guys, that's what I have to say about our energy for our new moon in Scorpio that's coming up, that's happening today. <laughs> Let's get a synchronicity card now. Some words of advice that we may need as we are going through this um, cycle. And our card for today, it's actually, it, it is very relevant. It says God's the boss. And that is another thing that we need to keep in mind while we are in this eclipse season, while we are in this south node lunar cycle this month is the need to release, the need to surrender. This is a very highly fated, destined period of time right now where our free will comes into it really has a lot to do with how we are re reacting to things, how we are responding to things, the mindsets and the attitudes that we are choosing to hold about what is unfolding. But this is a period of time where there is a need to sort of release the reins and go with the flow of the universe and trust God and God's the boss. That's what we need to know about this eclipse cycle and this new moon cycle. It says, who then is that faithful and wise steward? Luke 12, 42. You must do your job joyously and faithfully in the knowledge that God is your boss. Your subconscious will then respond and promote you and remove obstacles to your success. Have a constructive vision, be faithful to your vision, show respect for authority, and you will be prospered along all lines and that's what I'm saying like also with Saturn having just gone direct it is like we have this moral duty or this obligation or this responsibility to do what's right and to do what's right by like our heart also at this point in time but I feel like this is excellent advice in the context of where we're at right now energetically and something that we should definitely keep in mind as we are going throughout this cycle. But that's what I have to say today, you guys. Message from the stars um, that we have playing out the way that I'm interpreting the energy over the course of this cycle and our synchronicity message, God, spirit, universe, and God's the boss. So that's what I have to say today, guys. I hope that you liked it. I hope I was able to provide something of value to you in this video. If you guys did like it, please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends if you think they would be interested in this kind of content and like it as well. Leave me comments, you guys. I absolutely love your comments. I appreciate your feedback. I really um, appreciate knowing how these aspects are playing out for you guys and how they're affecting you as well. I also have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, a website, and some other socials in my description box below if any of you guys are interested in any of that. And uh, come back with me, you guys. We will have a lot more energy to talk about this week. I will be here. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it and I will see you next time guys have a beautiful day have a beautiful new moon cycle and until next time bye everyone